Bless him. What a God he is. Fairest of 10,000. Creation. Everybody bows to him. Including creatures in heaven. And we are being called to be in his image. What a terrible privilege. Thank you father. For who you are. And for who you've made us to be. We give you praise. We give you thanks. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you for the week that passed. Thank you for mighty things you did in the week. Thank you for terrible deliverances. Thank you for help that we saw. Thank you for divine assistance. Thank you for the many deliveries of babies that you gave to us. Thank you. There was no casualty. Nobody lost their lives. Mothers and children came out safe and sound. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. Thank you for many more children on the way. Thank you, thank you, thank you in advance. Thank you for this great favor you've shown to us. Be magnified and be glorified. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Speak your word to your people. Give it life. Breathe upon it. Let no one remain the same. The word of God is life-giving. The Bible said it is quick. It quickens. Let it quicken us. Revive our spirits. Quicken our bodies. In the name of Jesus Christ. Answer somebody's question. And reposition us for destiny. Make us Lord exactly whom you created us to be. Thank you Lord. I didn't hear amen. Thank you Father. We call it done in Jesus mighty name. If you can say that amen God will answer you. Give the Lord a big hand as you take your seat. Hallelujah. This is our month of wisdom. Our month of wisdom. Our month, not just wisdom, the month of the wisdom of God. Proverbs chapter 24, verse 3 and 4. Through wisdom is a house built, and by understanding it is established. And by, verse 4, and by knowledge shall the chambers be filled with all pleasant and precious and pleasant riches i like it again in the amplified through godly wisdom is a house a home a life a family built through skillful and godly wisdom a, it's a home a family a life built and by understanding it is established on a sound and good foundation and by knowledge shall its chambers of every area be filled with all precious and pleasant riches. We're reading Matthew chapter 25, verse 1 to 13. Uh, very quickly, I'm talking about the wisdom of the virgins. The wisdom of the virgins. Then shall the kingdom of God of heaven be likened unto ten virgins which took their lamps and went forth to meet the bridegroom. 
please be quick. And five of them were wise and five were foolish. They that were foolish took their lamps and took no oil with them. But the wise took oil in their vessels with their lamps. While the bridegroom tarried, they all slumbered and slept. And it, at midnight there was a cry made, Behold, the bridegroom cometh. Go ye out to meet him. Then all those virgins arose and trimmed their lamps. And the foolish said unto the wise, Give us of your oil, for our lamps are gone out. But the wise answered, saying, Not so, lest there be not enough for us and you. But you go rather to them that sell and buy for yourselves. And while they went to buy, the bridegroom came, and they that were ready went in with him to the marriage. And the door was shut. Verse 11. And afterward also came the, the other virgins, saying, Lord, uh, open unto us. But he answered and said, Verily I say unto you, I know you not. Watch therefore, for you know not neither the day nor the hour wherein the Son of Man cometh. Wisdom is not in words, but in deeds. Wisdom is not known by what you say. Your, the, the wisdom of your life is known by the practice of your life. It's known by your conduct, what the King James will call your conversation. When your wisdom does not affect and improve the way you live, then it fails to qualify as wisdom. It fails to qualify as wisdom. Your life must exhibit wisdom. The epitome of wisdom is in how it reflects in your life. Uh, you are amount to a foolish person if you know a lot and your life does not show it. You understand what I'm saying? We know you know a lot. When you talk, we know you have, but your life does not reflect the wisdom. So when you operate God's wisdom in your life, you will be a picture of success, progress, and greatness. When you operate God's wisdom in your life, you will be a picture of of success, progress, and greatness. So there are things I want us to glean from this parable. Like I've said before, the parables of Jesus are prophetic in nature. In fact, the parables of Jesus are his prophecies. He could not prophesy because all prophecies were about him. The Bible said the testimony of Jesus, the spirit of prophecy. So how would he now say, thus saith the Lord? <laughs> so he had to tell his prophecies in parables. His parables have prophetic value. They have prophetic manifestations, prophetic meanings. He said, number one, there were ten virgins, which is, the, which is indicative of totality. Our focus there is ten. There were ten virgins. Somebody say totality. Ten is a number of total, 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 ten. It times it by ten, it gives you hundred. Praise the Lord. It is the last God could go when Abraham was interceding for Sodom and Gomorrah. He said, if, if after saying from 50, he came down to 10. And he said, if you find 10, God said, I will still spare. And Abraham could not go below 10. 10 is a number of totality. That's why we have 10 commandments, not 11, not 9. 10 commandments, complete, whole, total. The Bible says, do you see a woman that had 10 pieces of silver and she lost one? You know what I'm saying? Total, 10, complete. So when he says total, I talk about the entire church, the body of Christ, the church, the entire church. You need to be smart, and I'm going to get there. You know, so the words virgin used in relation to the saints of the, is used in relation to the saints, the body of Christ, the church, the church, total church, the entire church, the whole church. They said that like unto 10 virgins, we are like virgins in the realm of the spirit. Second Corinthians Chapter 11 verse 2 says, For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to a husband, that I may present you as a chaste virgin to Christ. As a chaste virgin to Christ. So we are the virgins. We are the chaste. A virgin is an unmarried woman. That's the real meaning of a virgin in the Bible, I know. In, our, in 21st century, we consider virgins of home never had sex. But a virgin is an unmarried woman, and a virgin is a lady that is being prepared for marriage. Is being prepared for marriage. We are being prepared for the marriage feast. We are being prepared for the rapture. A virgin is a bride waiting for her groom to come. A virgin is a bride waiting for her groom to come. And we are God's virgin. We are waiting for him to come. These things follow the Jewish culture very perfectly. And then we are the church, the bride of Christ, waiting for our marriage, you know, with Jesus Christ, the groom. There's going to be a marriage feast. 
very soon. That's why God likens the church to his bride. That's why he say honor marriage. You know, marriage is honorable. Another way to say it is honor marriage because that is how I describe my relationship with the church. When you dishonor marriage and desecrate it, you are personally offending me. That's what God is saying. You are offending me personally. And he says such persons, I will judge them. Okay? Because you are, you are, you are lacking understanding. Just like taking the communion uh, unworthily. He says you do not descend the body. And some people have said, well, uh, if you have sinned, don't take it. Well, that's true. But the real meaning of not descending the body is this. That you have not descended that the body is one body. You can't fragment it. You can't take the communion in division, in malice, in bitterness, in unforgiveness. The Bible says you will cause harm to yourself and you sleep because the body is symbolic of one. When in a fragmented uh, spirit, in, in, you know, uh, in malice and all that, you take the communion, you are endangering yourself. That's what it means to descend the body. Praise the name of the Lord. All right. So uh, we are God's church. We are virgins. Someone say, I'm a virgin. I know you may have been a criminal before. Just say it by faith. Say, I'm a virgin. Praise God. <laughs> the Bible says all things have passed away. Not be so. Number two, they all had their lamps. Very interesting. You see, they all had, they were all virgins. They all had their lamps. They all had lamps. So they were doing fine. The lamp represents your salvation. Jesus died for all. And when you accept into your life, he comes to your life. Isaiah 62 verse 1. The lamp represents your salvation. Look at what, you know, Isaiah 62 verse 1. For Zion's sake will I not hold my peace. And for Jerusalem's sake I will not rest until the righteousness thereof go forth as brightness. And the salvation thereof as what? As a lamp that burneth. So they, we, they all had their lamps. And the lamp is symbolic of salvation. You are saved. You've given your life to Jesus Christ. You are born again. We all have the lamps. Somebody say, I have the lamp. Jesus said, you are what? You are the light of the world. The Bible says, this is the word that lighted every man that cometh into the world. So when you meet with Jesus, you get born again, you, are, you, you become light. But the mistake of many believers, too many for my liking, is that they get the light and they stop there. And that's where the problem comes. Hallelujah. You say, for Zion's sake, will I know my peace still? You know, to your salvation goes as a lamp that burns. When it comes to salvation, we are equal. Everybody is the same. God has saved. When it comes to the grace, the grace appeared to all. Titus 2.11. The grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to how many men? All men. We all, ten, all ten, the whole church, we are saved. So we have our lamps. We were all lighted. We got saved. But there is something more. And that takes us to number three. The number three point is that five were wise and five were foolish. That is very disturbing because it says half of the church is wise, half of the church is foolish. That is the prophetic dimension of that parable. It's trying to tell you that half of the church will manifest foolishness. Half of the church will manifest wisdom. And I'm telling you the truth. The person who said it is Jesus is written in red letter in the Bible. The words of Jesus cannot pass away. And it cannot, be, it, it cannot be a lie. It would take divine intervention for more than half of the church to make heaven because of foolishness. You understand what I'm saying? You know, there are many ways to define foolishness. The Bible says, the fool saith in his heart that there is no God. And he didn't say with his mouth. He says in his heart. And what you say in your heart reflects in your actions. By the action of somebody you know, the person has no value for God, has no respect for God. I was teaching marriage school yesterday and I was telling the students, I said, the worst thing that can happen to you in life is to marry somebody that does not fear God. You don't have a marriage. Someone that doesn't fear God, does not reverence God, does not respect God, that, that is, has no reverence for his word. That is a disaster. It is not enough to be saved, but you have to be wise. Don't just be saved. Proceed also unto wisdom. It is not enough to be spiritual. But there has to be sufficient wisdom in your life for you to, to, you know, to have stability. If not, you will lack stability. Isaiah 33 verse 6, I think, it says, Wisdom and knowledge shall be the stability of your times. Shall be the stability of your times. When a person has wisdom, they are stable. Hallelujah. 
Situations don't shake them. Things don't move them anyhow. Where there is no wisdom, there will be abundant sufferings and pains and stress. The Bible says in Ecclesiastes 10.10, 10, it says if the axe is blunt and you don't sharpen the edge, then you will have to apply much strength. But wisdom is profitable to direct. It's terrible. It's a terrible thing when you lack wisdom. Because when you lack wisdom, you lack direction. You lack direction. When you lack direction, you suffer unnecessarily. You will have so many failed investments. You'll be going to so many places at the same time. All kinds. Somebody called my wife, for instance, and said, and that was, I think, on Friday. For my colleague, colleague, sometime, sometime, maybe from school. And he's a doctor, of course, now. And he's talking about how my wife should give him a loan. This, 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 this. You know, sorry, no, no, no. Be his guarantor. Is his guarantor to get a loan for what he wants to travel abroad? It's everybody's family. His wife is G3, everybody's G3. He's just made an investment of a 14 million naira car, you know. And um, my wife should give him loan so he can go on family vacation. I heard my wife because she was the study at the time. I heard my wife say, Well, I need to ask my husband. Pure wisdom, pure wisdom. An independent wife will just go, Okay, how much is it you want to do? All right. For your information, you don't guarantee what you can't pay off. Did you hear me? You don't guarantee what you cannot pay off. Because by guaranteeing, you are saying, if they don't pay, I will pay. When my wife now told me, anger boiled inside me. What wickedness is this? You want to travel abroad. You are having 14 million naira car. That is not even an investment. Even the traveling abroad is not an investment. As far as I'm concerned, are you going for a course? You are driving 14 million and looking for loan. Alaba Kashaba, Holy Ghost Bulala. So that sense can return to his head. It seems to me he wants to swindle my wife. He said, No, when he travels, they'll be taken from his salary. They'll be taken from his salary. What is nonsense is that? What, 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 what? Anyway. May wisdom be available for direction in your life. May you have enough wisdom that will help you get directed. So many people's lives have been ruined financially because of this guarantor thing. Now, before I used to sign guarantor, somebody wants to have a, um, uh, uh, get a job, they say it's guarantor. I don't even waste time. Referee. <laughs> now I have to read though. Because one time they told me to provide my account number. I started saying, Why? What has my account number got to do? If you don't give the person the job, tell the person I don't want to give you the job. Carry your useless job away. That for me, I will now provide my account number because I want to help somebody. I say, how? How much are you even paying? Nonsense. If, sorry. It's nonsense. If you want to help somebody, help somebody. Are you giving the person money to hold? But the person now, the, the referee, I now provide my account number. So that what you, will you do? Okay, I'll give you an account that has not been operational. A dormant account. You will draw money till the AFC look for you. Praise the Lord. May wisdom be available for direction in our lives. I didn't hear that. I said may wisdom be available for direction in our lives. So you may not really enjoy your salvation in the absence of wisdom. You will not enjoy your salvation the way you ought to because of the absence of wisdom. You will not enjoy your salvation the way you ought to. Jesus was not just spiritual. You need to see what he said about Jesus in the book of Luke chapter 2 verse 40. Very powerful things was, were said there and very profound. He said, and the child grew and did what? Waxed strong in spirit. He became spiritual. And he stopped there. Filled, not he didn't just have it, he was filled with wisdom and the grace of God was upon him. He was filled with wisdom. So if Jesus, our master and our Lord, didn't just get spiritual, because there are so many spiritual people whose heads are empty. So many spiritual people who don't know the next thing to decorum, to don't know how to manage themselves. Somebody came to me when a certain FM, one of the most popular FM networks came here. And one of the people, one of the producers came to me and said, Pastor, we're looking for people that will um, provide content. 
And we know that not every preacher can handle radio or public something. So please, we want you to come. They say every week. That's free publicity for me. But no time to go. But he stressed the point that not every, they can't get every preacher. Just get, you don't know how to preach. You preach crusade preaching in a banquet. They call you to speak in a banquet. You now preach crusade. I tell you, I tell you, you lack wisdom. Is somebody hearing me now? There is how to preach there. In the next couple of weeks, we are hitting the streets on all manner of crusades. Oh, that one is not banquet. It is lack of wisdom to preach like as if I'm preaching a banquet there. Ladies and gentlemen, praise the Lord. You will stay there and roast. Because in crusade, they want to see evidence of madness to confirm that you are serious about what you are saying. I don't know if I'm making sense here. You laugh like a madman. You shout like a madman. You tell him, my Jesus. <laughs> so, <laughs> wisdom is profitable to direct. Hallelujah. There is how to behave. It is wisdom to know how to dress for occasions. I don't wear suits to singles front talk. Did you hear what I said? I'm going to speak to mostly you, then I go with my suit. Praise God. It's hot in here, but the power is on. Nobody sent you that type of work. In singles front talk, most often I wear jeans top and jeans trouser with canvas or one shoe that is very soft so that I can manifest where. Are you hear what I'm saying? Somebody say wisdom. You don't kill a fly with hammer. You kill it with paper or something. You, something you swipe it. Eh? Neither do you go and neither do you go and attack a dog with 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 spoon. That there's no what to do per time. Somebody say wisdom. So now let's go to number four. The difference between these 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 two groups of people. What was the difference? Somebody said the extra. What was the wisdom? Somebody said the extra. They carried extra oil. They carried extra oil. Listen to me. The principle of extra states normal will not carry me too far. It states that normal will not last long. I must go the extra mile. I must take something extra. Extra also means plan for exigencies. Plan for in case it is. Plan. Don't just take life lightly. You are traveling and you just carry your boxer. And men who keep wearing boxer, the Lord will have mercy on you. Start wearing pants. I'm telling you now. Praise the Lord. Let's continue. I've seen so many men embarrass me. They, you embarrass manhood. Don't you know that what is inside of you needs control? Let's continue. Where was I? So you don't travel, you carry, you take boxer, you take singlet, you take one shirt because I'm going to wear, this is the shirt I wear, then this one I wear back because you want to travel light. Thank God for your life. Something now happens to one shirt or something happens to, what happens to your life? You now begin to, I have paid dearly for, for forgetting my pajamas or sleeping cloth. And I have to go to the boutique in the hotel. Can you give me something I can use to sleep? They say, where, where we have? This one is 10,000, this one is 6,000. And I'm looking, I say, it's for sleeping. They say, that's the price. That's the price. <laughs> and I will look at we price, 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 price. I look like a poor man. Why? And that thing, I'll wear it, I will not wear it again after that. Because it's not comfortable for sleeping. It's just so I have to preserve the one I wore, which I want to wear back. Traveling light can be nice, but it's not so nice. It can be full of strandation. Somebody shout hallelujah. What you are willing to do beyond the normal is what will make up your wisdom. What you are willing to do beyond the normal is what makes up your wisdom. You are preparing for, for marriage. And you are not going extra. Go extra. Go extra. Do a little bit more than what has been given to you to do. Because most people who prepare for marriage are preparing for wedding. 
They're not preparing for marriage. Check out. It's preparing for marriage. It's not, please, where are you? I'm, I'm going to Abba so that I can buy things. What are you doing? We're preparing for my marriage. I'm going for, to Abba now so I can buy, I can buy the Ashwebi. Please, correct yourself. You are preparing for what? Wedding. What are you doing? I'm preparing for my marriage because we're trying to go and choose materials. Excuse me. All the plan, you're planning for wedding. Plan for marriage. And how do you prepare for marriage? Have you not read Matthew 19, 4? Jesus said, have you not read? You've got to read. You prepare your mind. How do you prepare for marriage? You ask questions to the person you want to marry. You don't just move on. All you are saying, I love you, I love you, I love you. No question asking. Ask questions. What are your favorite colors? Black. The next one, red. Ask how. Are you a cultist? Why are your favorite color black and red? Are you a Buccaneer member or pirates? Hallelujah. A young lady was going to marry somebody, uh, I think, in uh, Dallas. So somebody gave her my number. She was in a state of confusion, and she called me. And since I wasn't doing much, I was just enjoying myself, uh, sleeping till the time so I can come back. So she called me and was asking, this person she wants to marry, this, 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 this. Anytime he, he takes me out for us to go and eat, he keeps admiring bars. He said, the bar is so nice. And she said, I see myself like someone's going to marry someone who is either a pastor or is going to be a pastor or like a pastor. And the person you want to marry is admiring bars and the wine display. I told her, I told her, the Lord. Run. Why is, and keep telling, when we, when we marry, our, our, our bar, our bar is going to be like from year to year, you know, four feet uh, by five feet. I, know. I told her, she said, well, well, she refused to break the relationship. Oh. Say, well, well, well. So I said, okay. I told her, I will be shocked if you marry that man. Thank God for his mercies. The guy himself delivered her from his hand. I told her, please, let's not marry. Because my destiny is bar. You're on his pulpit. And so what happened? See, he, the guy left. He didn't reach three months. The exact spec of what she described to me proposed to her. She said to someone, what would have happened to me if I didn't talk to Pastor Ezekiel? And then she said, please, you wed me. I said, no, I can't wed you because that will be creating problem with your pastor and your church. He said, no, 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 no. I'm moving from that city to another city. So they won't even know. Da, 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 da. I argued she paid my ticket business class to go and wed her. I, I left here Thursday, landed on Friday, wedded her on Saturday, slept on Sunday. I had to sleep, boarded the plane on Monday to come back with thousands of dollars on honorarium. Father, open more of such doors. <laughs> In the name of Jesus. She just had to, that was the, her way of, I mean, if God could use this man, and as I was talking to her for over two hours on the phone, she was writing everything down, and those were the same things she counseled other people about, and it worked for them. She's also, uh, she's now using it to help. She's now a marriage counselor. Praise the Lord. I said, praise the Lord. Go the extra. Ask tough questions. Okay? Do the extra. Okay, you have read the handout. Read the textbook because handout is a handout a hand that is handed <laughs> a hand that is out eh? <laughs> go ahead read the textbook listen to other go on youtube learn a little bit more add something go the extra mile the the wisdom of extra will make you last with time because what happened at the end of the day well, let me go to the last point, number five. The price of wisdom is inconvenience. What happened? The Bible said they all slept. How many of them slept? Did you notice? Oh, it's not only the foolish that slept. Sleep used to catch the wise too. Both the wise and the foolish slept. And they abandoned themselves. Then the bridegroom came. And you see, time tells us the strength of your preparation. The strength of your life. Anybody can do anything in the short run. We, we, the, real people are people of the long term. The long run. 
the wise stood up, trimmed up their lamps, and went in with the bridegroom. But the foolish said, please give us of your oil. Wrong English. They don't give oil. They buy oil. Rewind. They don't give oil. What do they do? They buy oil. They don't give oil. They buy oil. And so the wife said, no, if we give you, it will not be enough for us. These are not the kind of things they give. Uh, salvation is a gift. The lamp the, is a gift. But the oil is a price. I like the way we call it in Nigeria. Oil. The oil is what? You pay for it. And what is the price of the oil? Inconvenience. Inconvenience. Do you, did you notice that they had to carry the lamp in one hand and carry the oil in the other hand? Is that conveniencing? They don't have any hand for pleasure, for leisure, any hand to carry and do something. That means it's complete, total focus, brutal focus, no opportunity for distraction. May your both hands be occupied. May you not have the time for frivolities and stupidity that will put you in trouble. There are things we are engaging that drain our oil fast. Fast. Drain you and leave you dry. Pay the price for the oil and pay for it on time. Did you hear what I said? Pay for it on time. See, all the wisdom moves you make today is not today it will pay off. It's going to pay off tomorrow. My, my mates who we left secondary school together, university, who really wanted to have fun and fun and fun. Some have died and some cannot be found on the radar. They cannot be found on the radar. It, before these people decided to carry extra oil, they saw the future. So what makes you wise? Your ability to see the future. If you can't see the future of each action, you are a disaster waiting to happen. You must predict the future of every action. Don't embark on anything whose future you don't understand. Neither have friends whose future you, don't, you are not sure of. You must think, Dr. Miles Monroe said, for anything he wants to do, he asks himself, will I be happy about this by tomorrow? If you will not be happy, that is just simple wisdom. Will this lamp carry oil? What if the bridegroom does not come on time? Is somebody get what I'm saying? Because the Bible said the bridegroom tarried. He delayed. Tarry means to delay. He didn't come on time. So real believers are not known for short-term preparation. They are known for long term. You build up that kind of value system that cannot break under any pressure. Did you hear me? <laughs> mm. what that is the pressure of adversity or the pressure of prosperity both of them mount pressure on everybody prosperity can pressure you into oblivion that's why David said in my prosperity I shall not be moved uh, where was I saying this I think during the blessing summit you know everybody is humble poverty humbles people we are not sure of your humility See, you have money. Let them remove all the money in your hand. That's the when we we'll know the you know we we'll now know that your humility before now was uh, pressurized. You don't have money. You shake people with two hands. Even the people that are lower than you. Everything you want to say, but it don't go somewhere. But um, what else do they say? You know? Why? Poverty. When money comes. <laughs> that man that said he's humble, you will be shocked. You thought you knew him. Yeah, the word of the Lord. You don't know any man when they don't have money. Whatever you do with them, you do with them by faith. When money comes, the real person shows. Did you hear me? Yes. I'm telling you. There are some of us who, who we are not even, we are not aware that we are proud. Yes now. You don't know. Because anytime you just think, mm, mm, three million, 
mercantile bank, four million in Allied Bank. Mm, I'm mentioning banks that have expired, you know. Uh, it's also a million in that bank. So you will see walking step. Their voice become as if they want to sleep. Good morning. How are you? The money makes their voice drowsy. People that they are made become their son. How are you, my son? What's in the head? Three million, four million, five million. How are you? Good, 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 good. Well done, eh? You are trying. Keep it up, keep it up. I like when young men are serious. You are younger than the person... You know, somebody, somebody, we, when, we, when, when, when I started outstation pastoring, first in the Kate 98, we had to visit somebody, myself and another pastor. We used to carry one box like Jehovah's Witness. That box, nothing inside, only Bible. So that the Bible is too big, you have to put it inside the box. On them box that my brother had left in the house that he has abandoned, I took it, I said, I oh, threw it away this type of box. I dusted it, cleaned it, put my Bible. Bah. So we visited his church, which was holding in a garage. And he said, Wow, I like it when young men are serious with God. I turned and looked at my friend. Is he weak? He's calling young men. Because of a few mobile staffs who come to the church, who pay some tithe that helps you be able to. I said, I don't suffer. Let's not talk the other side of the story uh, because uh, uh, it's not good. You get what I'm saying now? It's not good. It's not a good thing. May the Lord give you grace for humility. Amen. I said, may the Lord give you grace for humility. Amen. Inconvenience yourself. Wake up when others are sleeping and study. Wake up. If it's your like quiet now, wake up and stretch that your voice. Ooh! Others are sleeping. You are... Are they timing me now? Praise the Lord. Let's stand to our feet. Eh? Stretch your voice. If you, are, if you are the one that is, uh, whatever, just prepare yourself. Somebody say extra mile. The person didn't hear you say extra mile. Why are you looking at me like that? Tell your neighbor, say extra mile. That's all. That's all. Now, let me, ra, 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 let me round up. Carry something. Carry those books and come. Uh -huh. Wisdom. This is wisdom. It's the lamp. Maybe so. It's the lamp. But where did they carry the oil in their vessel? Second Corinthians 4, 7. We have this treasure in what? Earthen vessel. That the excellency of the power may be of God and not of man. If you know you you can be saved, this thing needs oiling, it's not that saved. This vessel, oil it regularly, oil it all the time, oil it by your prayer life. You are doing something to this vessel as you study the word, you are oiling this vessel as you fast, which is fast getting unpopular. You are oiling this vessel, self denial, and all that. You are oiling this vessel because when this lamp is going out you will have enough discipline to trim it up again because you have disciplined yourself before now. I hope with these few points of mine, succeeded to convince you. Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Don't be so proud of your salvation and grace that you forget that there is need for discipline. A need for what? Discipline. Lift your hands and give him thanks. Give him praise. Hallelujah. Give him thanks for the word. In Jesus' name. Quickly, I want to pray for those that want to make Jesus their Lord and Savior. You need to be saved. You need to be born again. You are here today and you don't have a relationship with God. You are not sure if Jesus comes today, you will make heaven. Maybe you are a backslider. You really want to be restored. You don't know how to go about it. This is your chance. 
And please, as I'm saying this, I don't want you to consider anybody. And don't let nobody come to your mind. This is between you and God alone. You're saying, Pastor, I want to be born again. I want to give my life to Jesus. I want to rededicate my life to the Lord. I'm not sure of heaven. I want all movements to cease, please. I'm not sure of heaven. I want to make peace with God. Quickly, wherever you are, please pray this prayer with me from your heart. Right at your seat. Say, Lord Jesus, with all my heart. I repent of my sins. Wash me with your blood. Thank you for dying for me. I accept your sacrifice on the cross. And I receive you into my life today. As my Lord and my personal Savior. And by your grace. I vow to serve you. For the rest of my life. In Jesus name. Amen and amen. God bless you. You pray the prayer and you meant.